What does chapter 6 of the MetaZoo comic have to do with Seance? Welcome back to Crypto Theory. Tormentic here, and this is going to be a long one, so you should kind of maybe pause the video, go grab yourself a drink and a snack, and settle in because we got a lot to cover in this video right here. So, first, I want to talk about chapter six. Specifically, I want to talk about orange eyes. Now, if you aren't familiar with chapter six, that is when the attack on Loveland Castle was taking place, when Loveland and Sam figure out how they're going to actually try to fight back from whatever it is that is attacking them. You find out that it's a beastie caster that's actually controlling the cryptid that's attacking Loveland Castle. When Sam sees him, that's when he names him Orange Eyes because his eyes are literally glowing, like there's energy coming out of his eyes. Now, the reason why I bring that up and I go back to chapter six is because first, I'm confident that that shows that that beastie Sasquatch, what exactly Orange Eyes was, was being contracted itself by someone else, another caster. That's why the eyes were glowing the way they were in the comic. So that goes back to one of the original theory videos that I did about where did all the animals go when I was saying that anything and everything can be contracted. It takes it a step further though because that Sasquatch beastie is actually casting it actually has its own beastie that it has contracted which is huge now the beastie that it was contracting was the crosswick monster from ohio which had gone missing a couple years previous according to sam now the really really crazy thing is and i can't believe no one else has picked up on this so far is that if you look at the sigil that is on the crosswick monster it is literally the set symbol for seance it is the all-seeing eye so what this tells me is that whatever happens in seance has been set up since the very beginning since nightfall at least because again that sigil that's on that crosswick monster is the set symbol for seance it, it blew me away when i first actually saw that and again, I don't think that that sigil on the Crosswick monster is specifically from the Sasquatch Beastie caster that was controlling it. I think that when another caster or a beastie, if you will, is being controlled by an actual caster, if they go out and they contract something else, then I think it has the original caster sigil on it. So I don't think that the all-seeing eye was that Sasquatch Beastie's ca uh, sigil. I think that was actually the sigil of the one that was controlling the Sasquatch Beastie Caster. Now, you find out that the reason why that Sasquatch Beastie Caster is attacking Loveland Castle is because its master, the person that it reports to, wants all of the tomes, all of the spellbooks, all of the magic, the power that Loveland has inside of that castle. So Loveland has all of these books inside of the castle and whoever controls that Sasquatch wants those. Loveland even talks about how the dark forces are amassing to the north and their goal is to amass as many spell books and tomes as they can because that power alone will help them do whatever nefarious things that they actually want to get done. This also is the first time that I have an idea of why the aliens, why the UFOs are actually here on Earth. And I honestly think it's probably for the same thing. They want that information. They want those tomes. They want those spell books. They want that power. And it's not just Loveland, because you remember the invasion is actually happening all over. So it's all of these different places that are actually getting attacked simultaneously, I believe, in order to actually get, like I said, that information, that power to them. The reason why I make this conclusion is at the end of chapter 6, when Sam and Loveland are actually leaving the castle, they see the men in black in the distance. I mean, to the point to where they describe the car as it being black, there being shadowy figures inside, it's emanating a green glow that is a direct tie to UFO. So do I think that the aliens and the UFOs were the ones attacking Loveland Castle? I don't. I think they had plans to attack other places. So now let's backtrack to chapter two. Now the reason why we're backtracking to chapter two is because of an image that is actually at the end of the comic. Now if you look at this image, you can actually find a connection to the Key of Solomon. 
and I'll get into what the Key of Solomon is here in a second. Now, that image in the center is actually a direct reference to the Key of Solomon. It's actually talking about the story of the thief. Basically makes it to where whenever that spellbook is taken, uh, it's automatically returned to the caster. It makes it to where when you look at the spellbook and actually try to read it, if you're not the owner of it or if you don't have permission, the pages come out blank. What does that sound like? That sounds like chapter two, literally where the spellbook magically reappears in front of Sam multiple times. It's why the Rainbow Wizard looked through the spellbook and it was blank pages. It's one of those where you're not supposed to be able to use it unless it is yours. The really cool thing is that if you look at the outside edge of that image, you actually see all of those markings. Now those markings have a meaning and it ties directly back to the Book of Solomon. The top images, is what's called the seal of Mars. The middle images going down the sides are called the divine letters of Mars. And the images going across the bottom are the characters of Mars. And you can find a direct reference of those exact images in the Book of Solomon. In chapter six, Loveland even talks about uh, King Solomon, how he was a great and powerful caster and he actually uses one of the spells from the lesser key of Solomon in order to render Sam invisible for their plan to work. So these are all direct ties to the key of Solomon. Now, why do I bring up the key of Solomon? Well, the key of Solomon was actually originally created by Solomon in order to conjure and control demons. What do we know that's coming up that involves demons, devils? Things of that nature. Seance. Now, I'm not saying that Sam's spellbook itself, the one that he got from M, is the literal Key of Solomon, but it could have different aspects of the Key of Solomon. It could have some of the information from the Key of Solomon. And even some of the information, going back to what we were talking about with love, it's powerful stuff. Now, we also see in chapter six that Loveland is able to actually take all of the books inside of his castle and put them inside of his spellbook. What's to say that M's spellbook doesn't have the entirety of the Key of Solomon inside of it? So now let's start talking about the mat that they teased the other day, which has a ton of different references to it. So we've already established because of this Cryptid Nation one Salem's Witch, that casters and humans and pretty much anything can be contracted and when they're contracted they can be controlled that's literally the flavor text that the Salem witch talks about about how they were accused of witchcraft because Indrid Cold was controlling them with his dark magics making them do things so this is this is gonna sound a little crazy uh, I, I promise that it, it will make sense but it's my opinion that the person that's in the center of that mat with that crazy grin is actually Adam. Now, the reason why is it's my belief that Adam Ackler is actually a descendant of Indrid Cold. If you look at their character features, they have a very similar face feature. Uh, they both have the black hair. It would make sense why Indrid Cold was in Point Pleasant so long before the veil actually shattered. I'm starting to really think that Adam, like I said, is a descendant related somehow to Indrid Cold. It would explain why Adam is so powerful, why he was such a naturally gifted caster, while he was able to use willpower alone in the first comic to contract that jackalope. Like, Adam is, is a prodigy. They even talk about that before he goes off to Quimbley's, or when he goes off to Quimbley's. So there's a lot, I think, backing that up. Now, another very interesting thing about the Key of Solomon is that the spells and the incantations that are actually in it require everything to be completely lined up. You have to have the exact amount of stuff, you have to have the right cardinal direction, you have to do it at a specific time, and all of these things have to be exact or it will not work. So the Majestic 12, going back to that, has to be in our solar system, at least in our solar system, for whatever seal it is that they're trying to break. To break. The planetary alignment has to happen in order for the seal to actually break. 
And I actually believe because of Afton doing some art in Seance with her own blood, then that actually is a tie into blood has to be spilled for this seal to be broken, specifically Indrid Cold's blood. Now, because of the seal needing Indrid Cold's blood in order for it to actually break, that explains why Adam is in the center of that mat. Because it is my belief that Indrid Cold has contracted Adam, whether when he was a Gumbaru or before or after. And Indrid Cold is forcing Adam to actually finish the ritual that will break the seal, that Ouija board, finally freeing Old Scratch. And he has to use Adam because, again, Indrid Cold's own blood has to be spilt, I feel, in order for this seal to be broken. Like I said though too, I'm not sure if Adam was actually kidnapped before the UFO invasion, while he was a Gumbaru, or at some point after the invasion happens. Like, I'm on the fence now about them making a deal with Indrid Cold and Old Scratch. I think the invasion, honestly, is just a, a distraction that Indrid Cold is causing in order to allow him to amass this army, if you will, of Dark Casters and Dark Beasties. Now. Let's talk about the two beasties that are actually on that mat as well. Both of them have actually been teased before. We've already established that the Ouija board was a seal uh, hiding Scratch in another prison, if you will. Uh, the board seal clearly is broken in this image, which we had talked about before. This is clearly in two pieces. That's why Scratch is standing up free, chains falling off of him. Now, here's the fun part. The beastie to the left of Scratch, I believe, is Baba Yaga. Now, Baba Yaga is also known as the Grandmother Witch. She's known as being one of the first witches. She was actually created by Scratch himself when he took the 12 souls of tormented evil women and put them into a cauldron and basically brewed them together to create someone as evil as him. Now, the thing that honestly gave it away was the release event box because if you look at it you can clearly see it's the same basic image as the image that's on the playmat even down to the hands that's honestly one of the main things that gave it away was the bony hands it's the same bony hands that are on the playmat also and this is really 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 cool Baba Yaga was known to travel around in a mortar and pestle Okay, in case you don't know, a mortal and pestle are the, the little clay cups almost, if you will, um, that um, witches and other things like that use to grind down certain ingredients. Uh, that's what the pestle is. The pestle is the hard part that actually grinds against the mortar. That's literally what this beastie is in on that re release event box. It is a cauldron that screams Baba Yaga. Now, the other thing too is that I know they've been very, very good about keeping everything North American based. And yes, Baba Yaga is Slavic, but Baba Yaga also is known all throughout Asia as different names, all throughout Europe as different names, even down into Africa. Interestingly enough, there is a Tengu, a, a yokai, a Tengu, that resembles Baba Yaga. So like I said, she's known throughout the world as different names. She's actually known, like I said, as one of the first witches, one of the most powerful witches, someone who works directly underneath Scratch. Now, the one to the right is interesting as well, because I believe that is Kikimara, specifically a Lishi Kikimara, because those were the ones that were more demonic in nature, if you will. Now, Kikimura is associated with demonic activity specifically tied to Baba Yaga. I can't say if Baba Yaga created Kikimura or not, but they're closely, closely tied together. And if you look at the image, and then you look at the couple that I was actually able to find, it, it's the closest thing I was able to find that looked just like this. It, it, the resemblance is actually a little uncanny. Now, you might be asking, why does both Baba Yaga and Kikimura in these pictures have feet, but they don't in this playmat? It's because I think both of them were sealed with Scratch. So that's not just a summoning of 
Scratch, a breaking of that seal to summon Scratch. This is literally a breaking of the seal to summon all of these dark beasties. I think there will be more. If you look at the bottom of the mat, you see the three lines going off into the direction towards where the caster would be sitting if they were playing. I think those three lines actually tie into more dark beasties that are being freed with this seal being broken. So what does all this mean? Let's recap this theory. Number one. Chapter 6 proves that a caster can control another caster, most likely even making the sigil imprint the same as the original base caster, the one that is in charge, the master if you will. Uh, number 2, the sigil seen in chapter 6 is the same as the seance set symbol. I can't believe, I can't believe that it's been there staring at us for this long and we haven't seen it. Uh, number three, the aliens and the UFOs here on Earth are trying to steal the knowledge and the tomes, the spell books, all of the, all of the power that humans have from the various different locations across all of Cryptic Nation, probably the world, including Yokai Island and Grimm's Kingdom. It's the same thing that Indrid Cold is trying to do with all of the Dark Beasties and the Dark Casters. Number four, the two Beasties on the playmat are Baba Yaga and Kikimara, both of which work for Scratch and it would make sense that they were sealed together with Scratch because of the close ties that they actually have. Number five, Adam is a descendant of Indrid Colt. I think it's been there all along and even down to the flavor text of his card, if you go back and look at it in Nightfall, it says, is he going to be good or is he going to be bad? I think Indrid, I, I think that Adam is related to Indrid Colt. Uh, number six, Indrid had to contract Adam to finish the breaking of Scratch's seal. He had to use his own blood, and of course, instead of using his own blood, he's just going to sacrifice Adam if he has to in order to break this seal to actually get old Scratch and these other demonic entities, beasties, free. And the last big one? Indrid Cold needs to steal the spells from Sam's spellbook in order to be able to contract and control old Scratch. Because remember, the Key of Solomon was literally created so it could conjure and control demons. Old Scratch is a demon, Indrid Cold wants to be in charge. Like I said though, this is a lot of information, most likely you have to go back and rewatch it. It took me a while to put all of this together. Uh, let me know what you think though in the comments, let me know if you actually think of anything that I might have missed, something else that might make sense, tie into all of this. I hope you enjoyed the video though. Definitely, like I said, leave a comment down below if I missed anything or if you have a different idea, and I will catch you with the next theory.